Thank you. If you want to get rid of your old computer, you usually take it to the shop where you bought it, or you take it directly to a recycling site. You take it there because you think that your computer is going to be recycled properly, under consideration of all the dangerous substances that might be inside. But in many cases, your old computer will end up here. This is Akbok Bloshi. Akbok Bloshi is a quarter of Accra, the capital of Ghana, and it is one of the world's most polluted sites. And this is due to the fact that this is not only a dump site, but also a recycling site for old electric and electronic devices, e-waste. And this e-waste is not of Ghanaian origin. It comes from North America, it comes from Australia, and it comes from all over Europe. The growing e -waste pro worldwide e-waste production is a problem. We expect more than 50 billion tons of e-waste generated in 2020, with increasing tendency. In Akbok Bloshi, approximately 4,500 to 6,000 workers work in the e-waste recycling process. This process is part of the informal sector, which means that the site is neither taxed nor monitored by any form of government. And the workers use very primitive methods to recycle. For example, you have the dismantlers. The dismantlers often only use hammers to dismantle the old devices. Or you have the burners. They burn the cables, the old cables, to get the copper inside. And as you can easily imagine, those processes pollute the workers, they pollute the residents, and they pollute the environment as well. The lack of any kind of work safety or medical care is making the situation even worse. If you want to carry out occupational health and safety, you need a certain framework. You need a sufficient legislation, you need financial resources, and of course, you need well-educated staff in occupational health and safety. So far, you can't find any of these conditions at Akbok Bloshi. I'm an occupational health physician and a public health scientist, and I'm part of an international multidisciplinary team with the main goal to improve workers' health and safety at Akbok Bloshi. Our project is part of a joint cooperation between the Department of Biological, Environmental and Occupational Health Sciences of the University of Ghana in Accra, and our Institute of Occupational, Social and Environmental Medicine at RWTH Aachen University. Our project is funded by the GIZ, the German Society for International Cooperation. In this project, we look at Akbok Bloshi like it would be a typical company, a large-scale enterprise with thousands of employees, comparable to companies such as BASF or ThyssenKrupp or even our university hospital. The first thing you do when you go into a company as an occupational health physician is to carry out a hazard assessment. It is necessary to identify all risks that are associated with your work. And it is important not to identify only those risks who are directly work-related, but also those who are indirectly work-related, like environmental factors such as weather or traffic. And it is important to do it systematically, so that you do not miss important hazards. For example, the people see the pictures of Akbok Bloshi, and of course, they're mostly impressed by the burners. And those workers are exposed to toxic fumes and explosive substances. But when we carried out our hazard assessment, when we spoke to the workers and had a look at the environmental conditions, we identified another important hazard. Akbok Bloshi is located next to a lagoon. And due to rainy season, you have a lot of standing water. These are best conditions for mosquitoes to breed. And mosquitoes in Ghana carry several quite serious diseases, such as malaria, dengue, or yellow fever. And when we spoke to the workers, they reported infections, which makes these so-called vector-borne diseases a quite serious health threat. And since these infections happen during work, it is an issue of occupational health and safety. Besides the hazard assessment, we are in particular interested into the internal exposure towards pollutants such as heavy metals or persistent organic pollutants. Internal exposure describes the concentration or the dose of a pollutant that is really getting in your body. This is called biomonitoring and it is an important tool of occupational health and safety. For example, we found elevated values for lead and nickel in e-waste workers but not only in e-waste workers, also in residents, and in particular in children who go to school next to the dump site. 
We furthermore found elevated values for polychlorinated biphenyls and dismantlers. Polychlorinated biphenyls belong to the group of persistent organic pollutants, known as the dirty dozen, and the production of polychlorinated biphenyls is forbidden since several years. The hazard assessment, as well as the biomonitoring, is the foundation to formulate further measures. In our example, one measure could be the use of protection gloves for dismantlers to reduce the uptake of polychlorinated biphenyls over the skin and therefore the internal exposure. Regarding the vector-borne diseases, the elimination of mosquito breeding site could be an urging measure. These are only two examples showing exemplarily how we carry out occupational health and safety. In our project, we formulated altogether four working packages with the main goal to improve the workers' health. Our first working package is to, is to establish a toxicological laboratory. This should be used for biomonitoring. In the last year, a couple of scientists came from Accra to Aachen and they learned the principles of biomonitoring. They measured heavy metals in blood and urine. After establishment of the laboratory, samples will be sent from Accra to Aachen for round-robin analysis for quality control. Furthermore, this laboratory can be also used for environmental monitoring to measure the pollution in water, air or soil. Our second working package is to support the establishment of a medical care unit. We know from previous studies that e-waste workers can hardly seek medical care. So they go to pharmacies to buy medication without professional advice, or they go to natural healers where they do not get professional care. We therefore support the establishment of a medical care unit directly at the site. We had several meetings with the Ghana Health Service as the executive organ of the Ministry of Health, and they ensured to run this unit. And it is important for us that this unit will be in Guinea enhanced to ensure the sustainability. A medical care unit will be furthermore interesting from an academic point of view. For the first time, we will be we will be able to systematically assess occupational related diseases and injuries in e-waste workers. And we can furthermore compare the internal exposure towards pollutants and the clinical symptoms and can therefore make a statement about the burden of disease. Our third working package is occupational health and safety interventions. There will be a teaching unit next to the medical care unit where the workers can learn how to work safer. They can learn, for example, which substances are dangerous, to which fluids they should avoid to get in contact with, and how to carry out a process in an alternative and safer way. Our fourth working package is the academic exchange. The goal of this working package is to strengthen occupational health and safety in Ghana. We therefore sent lecturers from Aachen to Accra to carry out practical occupational medicine in the field of Akbok Bloshi. It is our personal concern to spread the principles of occupational health and safety as they are carried out successfully here in Germany. We have, for example, the STOP principle. The STOP principle is an instruction for safer working and it means substitution, technical measure, organizational measure, personal protection equipment. For example, if you have a dangerous substance, the first thing you would try to do is to change that substance into a less dangerous substance. That's substitution. If you can't change the substance, you try to find a technical solution to avoid the contact between the substance and the worker. The technical solution is always followed by an organizational measure, such as, such as a short exposure time. The use of personal protection equipment, such as protection gloves, is always the last item on the list. We made progress in all of these four working packages in the past year, but there are still a lot of things to do. Our, up, our next goal in the upcoming months will be the establishment of the medical care unit for health data assessment, as well as the implementation of occupational health and safety interventions. The goal of TED is to spread ideas, and I hope that I could convince you that our project is something that is worth to be shared. Thank you very much for your attention.